In the previous examples and previous videos, we ended up with a class symbol representing a symbol in a context-free grammar. And we ended up with a static method called get, wherein you provide a value uh, in the form of a key. This is normally going to be a string. And we look this up in a dictionary and return the result if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, we create a new value and return it. Now, I previously said that we're doing this in order to uh, avoid having to go into details uh, for a more intermediate topic. Uh, this, in this video, we're going to actually go into details in that intermediate topic. Okay. So let's switch over to another file, uh, symbol.py. This is the entire file right here. I've just taken the symbol class uh, from our other Python file and put it inside its own, its own, its own file. So here's our, our symbol class. This is a simplification. I've taken out some of the methods. Uh, so we've got uh, our constructor. We've still got our toString. And we've got our isEpsilon. And by convention, we're saying that if value is none, the, the Python singleton object none, then that's going to mean that the symbol represents the empty string and we're going to print that using the symbol epsilon. Okay, so here's a main method and we're going to create a couple of instances of the symbol class and they're both going to be noun phrases. And the result of this block of code is going to be somewhat unintuitive and those unintuitive results will help guide us towards an understanding of this uh, slightly more advanced topic. It's an intermediate topic uh, wherein we look at object equality and hashability in Python. So let's create, uh, we've, got, we've created these two symbols. Now let's also create a set. Okay, so a set is gonna be our object here called symbols, and then we'll add x and add y to the set. Now at this point we can test for a couple of things and we're going to print out the result. One thing we can test for is object equality and that is asking is the object in memory represented by x the same object in memory as pointed to by y? And this should be false. Uh, so here we're constructing one instance of the symbol class here we're constructing another instance of the symbol class. Object x points to a certain location in memory. Object y points to a different location in the memory. Now it just so happens that the value inside each of those symbols is the same, but that doesn't take away from the fact that x and y are stored at two different locations in memory. Is is going to tell us are they the same? Are they pointing to the same location in memory? And the answer here should be no, which means that this print statement should print false. Now what about this? This is checking for conceptual equality. So does the symbol represented by x mean the same thing as the symbol represented by y? And ideally we would want this to return true. So the symbol np should be conceptually equal to a different symbol NP. They mean the same thing, they both have the same value, they should be equal in the sense that we want here. So ideally we would want this statement to print true. Okay, next let's look over here. So symbols is going to be a set. We've got X and Y in that set. And so if we've added two things to the set, and they represent the same thing, then even though we've added two things to the set, there should only be one item in the set. In other words, the length of the set, the number of items in the set at this point, ideally should be one. Why is this? Well, a set cannot contain duplicate items. X and Y are essentially duplicates of each other, as evidenced by the fact that we want X equals equals Y to return true. So if this is true, then the result here should be 1 because we can't have duplicates in a set. Therefore, when we add y, 
nothing should happen. We've already got an NP in the set, and therefore we would like this to return 1. Now let's run this code and see what actually happens. False. That was expected. We wanted x is y to return false. This is unexpected. x equals equals y currently returns false. And the length of the set is currently 2. This is undesired because since a set can't contain duplicates, it appears that the set does contain duplicates, which is not what we want. So what's going on? Python, when we define a class of our own, is going to give us a default implementation of the method required to implement, uh, to cause the equals equals operator to work. And by default, if we don't override it, equals equals is going to be giving us the same result as is. Okay? Which means that when we get down to here, uh, we'll not have the right behavior. So we're going to go at this point to the Python documentation. So this is going to be in the Python docs, docs.python.org, and we're dealing with Python 3, so slash 3, slash reference, slash data model.html. And if we go down, uh, we find a section for object equality. So in the Python data model, there's going to be uh, these built-in methods that we can override if we want to for equals, not equals, greater than, greater than equal to. There's also going to be another function that's going to be closely related that we'll look at in a second called hash. So these are going to be rich comparison operators. And if we want our class to implement equals equals in a way that is different from simply calling is, then we need to override at least the equals operator. Okay. Uh, there's also something to consider here. By convention, uh, these methods should only return true or false if the types are really comparable. So for example, a symbol should not necessarily be comparable to an integer. So if we called equals where, with, where self is a symbol and other is an integer, it wouldn't make sense to ask that question. And rather than return false, Python uh, encourages us to return not implemented. Um, and this will help uh, make, make things work a little better with equals and not equals. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and implement an equals operator. So self and other. And what are we going to check? Well, we want to check to see, uh, first of all, are we the same type? So are we both symbols? So if instance of, so if self is an instance of the type of class that other is, then we can ask the question, okay, uh, are we comparable? So then return true if self.value equals other.value and false otherwise. If self and other are not of the same type, if they're both not symbols, or if, if it is not the case that they are both symbols, then we're going to return not implemented. Okay. All right, now let's see if there's any other things that we need to take care of. See the paragraph on hash for some important notes on creating hashable objects which support custom comparison operators and are usable as dictionary keys. So let's scroll down to hash. 
the underscore underscore hash function is called by hash and is going to be called uh, when we try to put one of these elements in a set or in a frozen set or in a dictionary. Okay, This should return an integer. So if a class does not define an equals method, it should not define a hash method. We're fine there. If it defines an equals but not hash, then its instances will be unusable in hashable collections. So let's try that. Right now we've implemented equals, but we have not implemented hash. So right now, let's see what happens. Type error. So when we try to add x, which was of type symbol, to the set symbols, we raised a type error. The symbol is unhashable. So we can fix that. So we can add underscore underscore hash, and this needs to return an integer. Luckily, value is going to have hash returned on it, so we can simply uh, return the hash of self.value. Okay, and if we do that, we now at least have moved past that. Okay, so let's see what's what's the problem here. Instance of, the name instance of is not defined. So let's do a search and see what we did wrong. Python 3, instance of, instance, is instance. So we had the concept right, but we had the exact name wrong. Okay, so let's try, change this from instance of to is instance. There we go. Now we have the desired behavior. So false, true, one. All right, so by adding equals and hash methods, we get the appropriate behavior, the expected behavior. So by adding these, we can get around we can get we no longer have the need for the vocabulary style get method. The reason that we did this initially was to get around the fact that uh, if we want symbol to be in a set, we need those values. Now, with the get method, uh, because we always have equality uh, in symbols, because we have, if we're returning, if we're using get and calling it on NP more than once, we'll always get exactly the same object. Because of that, this behavior would work properly even uh, without the equals in hash. And we can try that. We can comment these out. Okay. And we'll get the wrong behavior. False, false. But if we add in this get method, So add the dictionary symbols to the symbol class and add get as we had before. We can then change this to call that get method and now we will get a an instance of symbol and when this is called again we will return exactly the same instance of symbol in other words x and y are now two different variables but they are pointing to the exact same symbol in memory so at this point everything should work fine and it does and indeed 
we see that this also pr prints true. X is Y. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch it back. At this point, which implementation you prefer is mostly a matter of style and personal preference. Uh, if there are, if there is a need uh, to minimize memory usage, then this is probably going to be preferred. Uh, but if memory isn't an issue, uh, then either one should be fine. Uh, and this mostly is going to come down to a matter of personal coding preference and style. So let's go ahead and switch these back. And now we get the desired behavior.